All right, you guys, Miss Bankston here. Uh, today you get to learn how to write formulas, which you have been practicing with your nuts and bolts lab for a couple of days. Today you get to put it all to work. So um, we're going to talk about the couple rules that you need in order to write formulas, and it's really easy. All right, here's a little cartoon. Top says, hey, don't take the rejuvenin serum. I wrote that formula backwards. And he died. I know, funny. All right, so here it is. There's three simple parts to writing chemical formulas. Uh, first one, you'll have symbols. Second one, subscripts. Third one, coefficients. I'm going to walk you through those th three things here, and then you're going to have some time to practice them at the end of the hour. So first of all, symbols. Symbols are the letters that we represent uh, the elements. The first letter is always going to be capitalized. If there's two letters, the second one is never capitalized. So if you look at your periodic table that got handed out to you today, you find the letter O in one of the squares, and that will represent which element. That's the symbol for which element. Hopefully you said oxygen. Okay, uh, CL found towards the right side of your periodic table represents chlorine. All right, each element in the periodic table has a one or two letter symbol that represents that element. It just saves us a lot of time and writing so we don't have to write out all of the names all the time. Okay, here's your periodic table. So you can see that some of them have one letter over here. Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, one letter. All of them that have two letters, especially a lot of the metals have two letters. Um, copper, Cu, zinc, Zn. The second letter is always lowercase. Okay? Second part of this is writing formulas. So a formula is what we're going to use to show that a couple of atoms have been bonded together. So they're a group of elements that are connected or bonded. Um, the formula is going to tell us what kind of atoms are in there and how many of each are present. What it doesn't tell us is what order that those atoms come in. So if we have lots and lots of atoms bonded together, we'll see which ones are in there, but it's not going to show us what order they're in. Kind of like if you're eating uh, chocolate fudge layered cake, you might know that there's cake and you might know that there's fudge, but you don't know what order all the layers are going to go in and what that cake's going to look like. Okay. So at the bottom are a couple of examples. We have HCl and NaCl, both of which are formulas. Okay. Here in your notebook, you guys can draw the pictures that pop up here. So if we need to pause the video, that's just fine to give some time for drawing and coloring. Color is going to be important again today, just like it was the other day. So we have a formula here, HCl. Now there's two symbols in that formula, H and CL. We know that this is together because that's a lowercase l. Okay, so H stands for hydrogen, so the hydrogen atom there. And CL stands for chlorine, so you're also going to have a chlorine atom. Now we draw them touching because they're bonded together in a formula that tells you that those two atoms are bonded together. Over here we have Na and CL bonded together. Okay, this one we're going to have Li. Look at your periodic table. What does Li stand for? Should be lithium. And F here stands for fluorine. Last one, K and I. K is potassium. And I is iodine. So potassium iodide is what this compound would be. Okay, so the formula really just shows you exactly which atoms are bonded together in each of these compounds. If you need to pause it here to give some time for drawing and coloring, that's just fine. Okay, the last bit that you need to, or, or I'm sorry, second to last, is your subscript. Okay, so with a subscript, it's going to be a small number that comes after the symbols. Okay, and the subscript tells you how many of each atom are in that compound. So here's an example, CO2. The little 2 down here is the subscript. So then we ask ourselves how many C's are in here and how many O's. If there's no subscript written after the C, then that means there's just one. 
the subscript only applies to the number it comes directly after. So that 2 does not apply to the C. It only applies to the O. So that means that we would have 1 C and 2 O's. Okay. Here's another one. This is for sugar. C12H22O11. Now all three of our symbols have subscripts this time. So how many C's, how many H's, and how many O's? We have 12 C's. 22 H's and 11 O's. Last one, MGCL2. Again, if there's no subscript after a symbol, then that means you just have one. So we'll have one MG and two CLs. Here's some examples for you to draw, and you're going to want to add color as well. So CO2 means we have one carbon. And we have two oxygen. There's your two oxygen atoms that are bonded to one carbon atom. Okay? H2O, we have two hydrogens. And we have one oxygen. There it is. Down here, we should have one nitrogen and three hydrogens. There's your one nitrogen with three hydrogens bonded to it. And lastly, uh, C2H6, you should have two C's and six H's bonded to them. Okay, so your formula shows you what atoms are there and how many when you add the subscripts in there. Okay, now we could have this in a whole straight line, all the C's and H's in one straight line. Those subscripts are not going to tell you what order these go in or what it looks like. Okay? Last bit here is the coefficient. And with the coefficient, it's going to be a number that's found out in front of your symbol or your formula. Okay? So down here, there's a, a number out in front of CO2. Here's your symbols, here's your subscript, and here's your coefficient in red. Okay? Basically, your coefficient tells you how many copies of that uh, molecule or compound that you're going to make. Okay, so here we're going to have five copies of a CO2 molecule. Here we're going to have ten copies of a C12H22O11. And here we'll have four copies of MgCl2. So you can add to your pictures from before in a second here. Let's walk through H2O together. So H2O, we have two hydrogens that are bonded to one oxygen. Okay, if we put a 2 out in front of it, that means we have two copies of the, everything in black. So you put a 2 out front, you have to double, you have two whole molecules. Okay, are these two molecules bonded together? No, two separate copies of water. <coughs> so if you look here, we did these before. CO2 looks like this. If I put a 3 out in front of it, that means that I must have three copies of that molecule. So we need to add two more copies. Now we have three copies of CO2 over here on water. Four copies of water. You need to make three more water molecules. Again, note these copies are not bonded together. Okay, the parts in black in the formula, that means they're bonded. The red coefficient tells you the number of copies of that formula. NH3, two copies of it, add another copy. Okay, C2H6, make two copies of that one, there it is. Okay, take a minute, pause so you can draw these and color them in as well. And that's it for today. If you have any questions, you know you can ask any of the grown-ups in the room, talk with the sub, or with uh, Mr. Karras or Miss Heather or Miss Ricky. Anybody can help you out. Uh, you're going to practice uh, with your symbols, and you're going to do some formula practice as well to finish out the hour. Thanks, and I'll see you guys on Monday.